I'm here with Jillian Irving. Uh, Jillian, if anyone doesn't know Jillian, she's a longtime client of mine. I've known Jillian for close to 10 years. So she's a, a serious investor uh, and she does multiple strategies. And with the midterm, midterm rentals all the rage these days, I asked Jillian if she would show us her property today. So Jillian, <laughs> uh, so you've been doing this for a little bit, have you not? Uh, midterm rentals, executive rentals? Well, so it's it's a fairly new strategy for me, but I have dabbled um, in it a little bit. Um, a couple of years before the pandemic, I thought, because I've got a really great property in downtown Toronto, um, I would say it's an A++ plus location. It has like a 98 walk score, um, a 93 transit score. Um, we are literally a stone's throw from like all the best restaurants, venues, boutiques off Queen Street in Toronto. So it's a fantastic location. Um, and while it had been a long-term rental for like ever since we bought it, which was, it was actually my first purchase back in 2009. Um, I always thought like this would make a great like Airbnb or an executive rental um, because I just knew that strategy had so much more juicy cash flow in it. So before the pandemic, I did kind of experiment with it and I put some like literally neighbors of mine in here for a short term while they were doing a renovation. And that is actually my ideal clientele. People who have like a really limited window. I know they're going to come, they're going to go because they want to go back to their own house. Um, and it was great. Like I increased the rent by, I want to say 50% for my short-term rental, my midterm rental people. Um, and then after they left, I just, I used that as an opportunity. So, so for numbers, Erwin, before it was a, it was a long-term rental. I charged 2,600 bucks a month for rent. I want to say that and was two bedroom, three, it's like two and a half a bedroom. It's a three bed. It's a three bedroom, two bath with parking. Um, so it's got an in the sauna. intersection in the intersection in Toronto, Broadview and Queen. Okay. So okay. like prime Lassieville. Um, so I was charging twenty six hundred bucks when the, my midterm renters came in. They paid thirty six hundred bucks a month, and when they left, I just charged my next long term renters thirty six hundred bucks a month. Um, so because I'm like it's just easier, right, <laughs> to have the long term renters but they've left and now we have totally transformed the space. Um, we hired um, some designers because I really feel like if you're going to do a proper midterm rental or Airbnb, which we're also going to experiment with, um, you need um, like you need proper furnishings. It needs to stand out like apart from a fantastic location, which I think's which I think are table stakes in this game. Um, good furnishings, nice layout. Um, it's also really important. So I was prepared to spend the money on that. And we've just finished it just in the last day. We have all the finishing touches on it and it is so fantastic. And, Do you want to see This is the unveiling. Hey. <laughs> and this is a, a, sort of an unveiling. <laughs> so can, can you yeah, show us the it, property? Can you show us? Yeah, I can show you a quick little tour around if you want. Um, yes, please. So it's a yes, really please. unusual space, like unusual as in unique and interesting. And I think that's what's going to hold it in such great stead. So let me kind of take you through from the front door. Um, okay. So welcome. Like this is the entrance view. And then we've got the living room to the right. Like huge, big, enormous bay went like window here but then as you come down the hallway it's got this incredible gallery that overlooks into the dining room below so this main floor space is just so different from like truly anything out there so main floor is living room like here's a nice little bathroom and then a bedroom on this floor as well with a walkout to the garden can we see the garden is okay. it, is, we're in the middle of fall it's oh, December it's actually yeah, December actually. Can, but it's actually it's not looking great out there yet we're not quite done but it's a little enclosed it's like a little enclosed place with like a little covered eating nook and we're going to put up like little twinkle lights and then that's the parking like just beyond the fence there so it's going to have those like cute little lights and stuff so it's gonna be gorgeous like lots of ambiance and then the master is sort of tucked away up these stairs ta-da oh my gosh i love this room so much 
this is a like got a, a king bed, like really good memory foam mattress. Yeah, so just again like super nice retreat up Amazing. here, tucked away. So that's bedroom number two. And, and Julian, this is part of a duplex, am I right? It is part of a duplex. I know it's really hard to conceive of what the main building looks like, but there is another unit upstairs. Like the common floor is the living room is their living room. So that's really the only common space. And then theirs goes to a huge loft. Their, their building is even cooler. And then kitchen. And again, like another walkout to the garden from down here. So if you wanted to barbecue, you could like zip out from the kitchen as well. And then here's that, the dining room again, looking up to the gallery. So just so much light in this building. Yeah. In the and the openness, it feels very open. It's so open. And then here's the third bedroom. So it's got a day bed here. And then in this little nook is actually a queen. It's that an ingress big. size window as well? That window looks huge. Yeah, yeah, the windows are big. There's two of them. Well, they're all huge. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And then this is a piece to raise these saunas. Ta-da! It has a sauna. <laughs> it, has a, it has a dry sauna. Right. Like, just tucked in here. So, you know, there's a lot about this space, I think, that will... Um, yeah, I think there's a lot about this space that makes it stand out from the others. And I think that's part of, um, you know, in a strategy, let me just try to turn my camera around here. Yeah, so I think when you're trying to compete in a really saturated, I won't say oversaturated, but a saturated Airbnb or, or midterm market, um, you know, having something that stands out, I think is a good um, protective mechanism for you. So while we haven't launched this anew yet on either Airbnb or or to, um, you know, like friends and family who are doing renovations. I'm really, I feel really excited about how this is going to go. But I don't have any real numbers for you yet. You'll have to have me back or win so I can give you the, the update. Uh, do you know what you're going to price it at? Oh, it's hard. So um, if we do 28 day rentals, I'm thinking probably 6,000 bucks a month. Um, and in the summer, if we do actually day-to-day -day rentals, it's probably going to be 600, and 600 bucks a day, at least. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, even compare that, compare that to a hotel, like you're getting a lot. Whoever takes the, da the daily rate is getting a lot compared to a hotel. Well, this is it. And it's sleep seven, right? So if you imagine just, you know, three couples coming compared to a hotel, it's, it's crazy cheap. Exactly. And then what do you think it would this would rent out as a long term rental? As a long term rental, or at least forty five hundred bucks. Right, right. So you're talking about like a fifteen hundred dollar uplift by yep. going this strategy versus long term. Yep. Yep. And you know, converting it to an Airbnb really really made me and my husband like dig in for repairs. Like there's some things for long term rental that you can leave. Like if your tenants aren't bugging you, you can leave stuff. But if you're going to be in the service industry, like you really have to like look in every corner and fix every squeaky door and adjust every squeaky knob. So we've actually really worked hard in here to, you know, paint again and fix everything. Um, and so whether this succeeds as a midterm rental or not, we have done ourselves a great service by just kind of improving the space for long-term renters, if that's what happens, because it looks amazing. Fantastic, Jillian. Jillian, yeah. the house looks amazing. Congratulations. I'm so excited. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> Fantastic. And we'll have you back on once you have some numbers. But yeah, yeah. this look. And again, you have experience doing this versus, and I specifically wanted to have you on because there's all these courses I see going on and all this mm -hmm. talk about midterm rental right now. But again, mm -hmm. you've been doing midterm rental for quite a few years already. Yeah, well, I've certainly been dabbling with it and um, and have dipped my toe in that water already. So yeah, I guess I'm a veteran compared to some. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Thanks so much. And if okay, anyone has questions around, around, uh, around midterm rentals, feel free to comment below and Jillian and I will get back to you. Probably Fantastic. answer them in a future episode. Great. Okay. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Jillian. Bye.